Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 20th, 2024 Mount Lebanon Planning Board meeting. The Mount Lebanon Planning Board will meet at its regularly scheduled time, August 20th. That's today. Um, <clears throat> okay, we'll have a call to order. A roll call, board members, Rebecca Griffith. Here. Dave Hornacek. Here. Clint Roundsville. Not yet present, but let us know if he, he joins. Okay. John Schrott is absent today. Andrew George, myself, I'm here. Uh, municipal staff, Dan Diceroff from Gateway Engineers. Here. Ian Means, our planner, is on vacation. Greg Wharton, our urban planning and sustainability coordinator. Here. And our liaison, Steve Silverman. I'm not appearing to be here. Okay. I'll read a statement on public comments. The planning board will accept public comments with each agenda item. Please note that a repetition of comments made by previous speakers is not necessary for them to be considered. If a group of residents shares an opinion, we suggest that you select a spokesperson. Public comments is not the appropriate time for prolonged debate or for personal comments about or questions directed to fellow residents, the board members, municipal staff, or any developer. In consideration of everyone's time, we encourage residents making public comment to refrain from repeating comments made by previous speakers. For Zoom participants, if you wish to comment during the public comment agenda items, use the raise hand function. During the public comment agenda item, the chair will recognize you. When reorganized, or I'm sorry, when recognized, be sure to unmute your line and announce your name and address for the record. If you have multiple or complicated comments, you are welcome to submit them to us in writing. We ask you to hold your remarks to five minutes and we'll let you know when your time is up. We appreciate your efforts to be respectful and ask that the audience refrain from any behavior that is disruptive or might intimidate free speech. Uh, with that, we'll move on to our first agenda item, the meeting minutes. Someone want to make a motion to approve minutes from the April 16th, 2024 meeting. Uh, this is Dave Hornacek. I move to approve the minutes of the April 16th, 2024 planning board meeting. Rebecca Griffith, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. Second agenda item is the re reorganization of the planning board. Each April meeting, the planning board conducts a reorganization and elects members as chair, vice chair, and secretary. Someone want to make a motion to recommend? Yes, I will do that. Rebecca Griffith, I make a move to nominate Andrew George as chair um, and Dave Hornacek as secretary and myself as vice chair. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that carries. We have no old business and our new business here. We have a request for preliminary approval and recommendation for final approval for a minor, minor subdivision plan. The Rorick sub property subdivision situated at 826 Country Club Drive is proposing an extinguishment of a lot line on the property. The property will remain compliant with the zoning district requirements for lot size. Um, do we have any you gentlemen here for that? Okay, you don't, you don't have anything to present? Or, all right, very good. Uh, do we have a letter from the engineer? We do, yes. I have a letter dated August 13th, uh, 2024, regarding the uh, Aurora subdivision. And basically, this is just a, uh, a lot line revision plan where they're removing some of the old lot lines uh, that exist uh, from previously recorded plans. There's multiple lots involved in this in this particular parcel. Uh, we've issued a letter. Uh, most of our comments are uh, just uh, minor uh, suggestions that needed to be added to the uh, to the plan. And I assume the surveyor has no problem making those revisions. Um, any questions on the letter? Uh, so I, I'm I'm good that you know before this gets to the commission that uh, Greg and I and Ian will make sure that any of these. Uh, comments are addressed. Okay. Thank you. I can go ahead and follow up with staff there. Okay. Well, would, any questions from the planning board? Someone would like to make a motion? Rebecca Griffith, I'll make a motion to grant preliminary approval and recommend final approval to the Rourke property subdivision condition upon the developer addressing the items required to be completed prior to final approval notal in the engineer's review letter dated August 7th, 2024. 
It's Dave Hornacek. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, it carries. Thank you. Yep. All right, we will move on to our capital improvement program update. We have a recommendation from the planning board on the proposal on the proposed capital improvement program for the years 2025 to 2029 as being in accordance with the comprehensive plan. All right. So uh, just kind of rehash from last year. I'm going to give a quick update on the uh, 2025 projects we have scheduled. Um, I think in total there's over 25 plus projects in uh there's 21 21 projects in the 2025 um time year and then uh, there's many many more for the uh for the time frame as well so just kind of starting off we're just going to roll down through um the public works department projects uh, recreation and parking and uh we'll just kind of start off with the street reconstruction so mount lebanon maintains 90 miles of streets um, with a typical lifespan of about 40 to 50 years and then uh, through the regular evaluations and the, the pavement, the pavement man management system uh, that kind of prioritizes the street reconstruction, um, uh, that that approach kind of prevents costly maintenance on streets that have been severely deteriorated. So we just kind of move that through and uh, and deem what streets might maybe uh, maybe needed to be reconstructed. Um, and then next we have some pretty major infrastructure improvements. Uh, Every year, sanitary sewer improvements. Uh, they're actively, the municipalities actively working on um, sanitary sewer systems. Uh, by 2026, we'll complete flow reduction projects to meet federal and state standards. Um, and then this effort includes testing, design, and construction funded through sanit funded solely through sanitary sewer charges. Um, so there's no cost to the taxpayer there; it's through sanitary sewer charges. Um, and then moving on to stormwater management to kind of build on that sanitary sewer. Uh, as part of our MS4 permit under the Clean Water Act, uh, Mount Lebanon implements stormwater management strategies to minimize runoff and pollution. Um, and then we're constantly active, uh, constantly um, fixing aging infrastructure there because we're always, always kind of finding new problems as we go through and then just building up on that aging infrastructure. Um, and then moving forward, we have scheduled equipment replacements pretty cut and dry from uh, from each year, uh, you know, we, we regularly replace equipment that has reached the end of its useful life. Uh, and then we based off of hours, operation, age and usage, uh, we kind of target which ones need to be replaced. And then this year in 2024, we've actually taken a look and assessed our efficiency overall with our fleet, whether that's possible conversion to electric or other other fuel alternatives. So that that's was completed this year is that that fleet efficiency plan we're taking a look at. Um, and then moving forward, we have some uh, facility updates as well. So the Public Safety Center is looking to have some exterior improvements be done. Um, it's kind of a more of a phased approach, um, but we're undergoing some essential HVAC upgrades from 2025 to 2028. Um, we're up, uh, replacing some outdated units, um, including a 40-ton unit. And uh, also we're looking at some more energy efficient system to reduce cost. Uh, and then moving on to a uh, public safety center. Again, we're looking to replace our boilers and control systems there. So there's some outdated boilers there that are reaching about its 20 year span. And um, they're gonna be also replaced with uh, some high efficiency units, reducing some energy consumption. And then um, we're also looking to overhaul the HVAC control systems for better efficiency as well. Uh, moving on to some more facilities, we have the North Meadowcroft Park. So Metacroft Park is undergoing some phased renovations, including some upgrades to the basketball and pickleball courts, along with some landscaping improvements. Um, these overall have been included with some updates to the accessibility of the park. Um, and then moving on to another park, we have the Bird Park Stream Restoration. It's a continuation of projects that have been done in the past. Um, and then this is a, a build on from the 2020 project to prevent some erosion and to protect some trees and vegetation in Bird Park. Um, and then some more park management stuff is some invasive species management. So from 2025 to 2029, uh, the municipality is looking to implement the invasive species management plan across Bird Park, Rob Hollow Park, Twin Hills Park, just kind of throughout the municipality. Um, but this effort includes planting new trees, protecting ex existing wildlife and adaptive management uh, practices to improve park ecosystems. And then finally, we, um, not finally, I should say second, second to finally, uh, we have EV infrastructure. 
And uh, starting in 2025, um, we'll be potentially looking at some fleet uh, charging stations that'll be looking at uh, to be installed at the public safety center, as well as the public works facility site. And then uh, potentially by 2026, um, a public charging station would be looked at to be installed at the, uh, the academy parking lot. But at the same time, there's potential where our academy lot could be funded by a joint uh, joint grant through other municipalities. So that may not be uh, may not be needed to be funded through the CIP. It could be funded solely through through grant funds. Um, so, but again, that's all part of that fleet efficiency plan we'll be looking at, and uh, that'll all kind of come to fruition here in the next I would say next couple of months. And then finally, um, we have the sidewalk expansion program. So in 2023, the municipality introduced a revised sidewalk expansion policy. And then this is kind of just a placeholder um, for projects that come up. I know there's some active projects that are going through right now. Um, so moving on to recreation, we have the ice rink, ice rink chiller replacement. Pretty uh, substantial project here. Uh, so the chiller system that was last replaced in 2005 um, is being upgraded after a major failure in 2023. Uh, so this project was going to provide a reliable ice making equipment, extend the life of the facility, um, which again, we see very high usage year round for the ice rink. I think it's down for two weeks total throughout the year. Um, and then also moving on to some more recreation, we have the tennis court reconstruction. Um, so the municipality is in the process of reconstructing tennis courts under, under a dome, um, potentially it has the dome capability, I should say. Uh, courts three and four will be rebuilt in 2025 and uh, completing the upgrade of all bubble courts that are um, that are currently used and make, making sure they, uh, they meet proper standards there. Um, going on with another tennis court, we have uh, the tennis court lighting. So new LED lighting will replace outdated fixtures on courts one through eight. Uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory cut and dry there. And then moving on to we have potential uh, looking at some pickleball courts, I know that's been a new high demand project here in the municipality, um, but courts one and two will be converted into six permanent pickleball courts. Um, those pickleball courts will be part of the new tennis center and used for leagues, instruction, and recreational play. Um, and then finally, finally in the tennis center, we have uh, tennis center fencing. So they're looking to just update some uh, fencing at the tennis center that has been, I would say, much needed um, over the last couple of years. And it's going to be kind of a two years project that's going to be improving function and aesthetics. Um, and as well as they're also going to be looking at the hitting wall as well at the tennis center. Uh, moving up to the golf course, uh, 2025, they're looking to make significant improvements to the golf course, including an installation of senior tees and upgrading existing the tees and fencing. Um, specifically, I think it's a long hole. I think it's a long hole nine. And then there's also fencing a long hole seven. Not entirely sure, but four. Four. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then moving back to the uh, to the ice rink, we have the bleacher railing replacement. Uh, so the ice ice rink's existing metal railings will be replaced with aluminum railings, making them much more durable, um, and then also easier to maintain. And then moving on to the parking, we have the south garage rehabilitation or south garage replacement. In this case, uh, the south garage requires major rehab within the next five years, most likely replacement. Um, with significant repairs being scheduled each year up until that end of the lifespan. Uh, so again, there, there's potential of looking at multiple funding sources for that, bond issues and grants and things like that. Uh, but that has prim primarily been identified with multiple boards, multiple advisory boards. Um, it's gonna be a pretty large project and large undertaking. And then moving up to the North Garage, lastly, uh, the North Garage elevators are gonna be modernized due to the wear and tear from outdoor exposures. Um, and then the remaining upgraders, remaining elevators will be upgraded in 2024 and 2025 to ensure reliable uh, usage there. So that is pretty much a sum of just the 2025 projects. Um, there's many, many more projects that go throughout 26 through 29, um, but that's just kind of a high level for 2025. So any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I guess if you could, Greg, just for the record, kind of what we discussed offline, um, just some of the future uh, improvements slated for the Cedar Boulevard fields, uh, middle fields, Clint Seymour fields, how, because they originally were scheduled for 2025, they're look, looking, looking at a 2026 window, but there's a benefit to that shift. I was wondering if you could just maybe elaborate on that sure. a little. Um, so it's been to the understanding of the municipality that we're going to have some bonds that will be 
kind of going away over the next year and we're going to have some capacity um, in 2026 to potentially uh, take on some new bond, uh, some new municipal bonds, which in that case, we, it would be much more mindful to kind of group these projects under one massive project um, rather than piecemealing each project to kind of disturb usage of that field. So identifying the key projects there at, at Clint Seymour, especially Middlefield and Clint Seymour um, with the turf and the lighting and the fencing. So um, 2026 will be a much better year, especially for funding. So that's why we kind of moved that all to 2026. So, And some of that uh, cost is offset by association support. Is, is that correct? Some, I think some. Um, I'd have to, I have to double check. I think there's, I'm not sure if it's in there. Yeah, I thought it was almost like 400,000, I believe, or, or advertisement fee, fee, something to that effect. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, no problem. That's all for me. Um, again, to talk about like the invasive species management stuff, I mean, I just feel like uh, some like educational type stuff to the municipality. I mean, I know the 32,000 in here, it's just for like the upfront stuff. And then there was more budgeted for 2026 to 2029 for removal, I assume, and management and everything. I know like a lot of the other green spaces in the community could use some help and I think some funds could be allocated toward that. And I know that this community would love to like be involved, have volunteer work, getting in there, maybe removing invasives, whatever we could do. Um, but you know, sometimes people just need to be told, you know, focus on this, focus on that. You know, this is invasive. This is not, um, you know, a master gardener may be in there just to kind of direct people. Kind of something like that. It's just maybe added to that 32,000. I don't know. Yeah, it's something definitely we could talk with. Um, Phil Avolio is our, our parks and facilities, um, I would say, our manager there. So it's something we could definitely talk with him about to see if it's something we could do. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else from the planning board? And from the engineer? Nothing on my part. Okay. Very nice presentation by Mr. Yep. Wharton. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, a a motion? Uh, I make a motion to recommend the 2025 2029 uh, comp, uh, capital improvements program as being in accordance with the adopted comprehensive plan. Excuse me. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries. Uh, do we have any citizen comments tonight? No? Okay. Well, then our next regularly scheduled meeting of the Mount Lebanon Planning Board is Tuesday, September 17th, 2024 at 7 p.m. All municipal meetings now have a, web, web, a Zoom webinar component to enable residents to attend meetings either virtually or in person. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn? It's Rebecca Griffith, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, it's Dave Hornacek, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you.